You know, obviously with the news uh, this morning, Miss Amy um, informed Coach Vrabes that he would no longer be the head coach here. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Vrabes for what he's done here the last uh, six years, uh, particularly the time that we've spent together. You know, I know there's been a lot of speculation over the last, you know, two, three months or whatever it's been about the nature of Mike and I's relationship. I will say that Mike and I, we've never had any issue versus whether it's personal or professional. Uh, we worked well together um, and had a good relationship. Uh, we were in lockstep. Uh, so I want to finally come out and, you know, dispel that. And, uh, you know, I wish Vrabes, you know, nothing but the best. I uh, consider him a friend, and I feel like we'll be that way moving forward. And so with that said, I'll open up for questions. Rand, you said when, when at the draft or when, when you were introduced that your number one thing was to serve Mike. Given, given today's developments, did you fail at that? Uh, I don't think we failed. I just think, um, you know, um, one of the things Mike's always says is that the ball isn't round, so you don't know how it's going to bounce, you know, and I don't think the uh, the ball bounced our way. You know, we were in uh, – we had seven one-score losses um, this year, so we were in games, just the ball didn't bounce our way. I wouldn't consider it a failure, but by no means, you know, were we happy uh, with the results, um, you know, and that's just something we've talked about you know, privately and as a group over the last uh, couple months of, you know, how do we get this thing right and how do we get this thing, you know, in the right direction. So I wouldn't call it a failure, you know, but it's definitely not up to the standard. Mike Vrabel doesn't have a job today. What, what is the disconnect there? Well, I think, I think Amy spoke to her decision, you know, of making, uh, you know, of the decision she made and why. Um, and that was about, you know, her long-term vision you know, of the organization. Um, and, and, and that's really, I think, what it was. The video, and you said that some consideration at least was given to a trade of Mike Vrabel. Can you elaborate on that? And was he ever directly asked if, if he would be part of a, a trade? Uh, I don't know the nature of his conversations uh, with Miss Amy about, you know, him being traded. Um, I do understand the question about a trade. It's just not as simple. Um, and cut and dry, and you look over the history um, of coaches being traded, it's just not a lot in recent times. And when you say recent times, uh, I know Sean Payton was just traded for, but he was out, you know, and New Orleans had a, had a coach in place. Um, but there's also league mandates and rules that you have to follow, you know, before you can execute a trade. And, uh, you know, you have to, the partner, uh, if you will, uh, would have have to go through an exhaustive uh, process and meet the Rooney rules and all those qualifications. Um, and before we could even start interviewing, we have to have an opening. And so it just prolongs our ability to get the next and best head coach in here. We're going to run an exhaustive process, uh, process uh, to find our next head coach. Um, and it's going to involve, you know, a lot of people. Um, you know, I, obviously I'll be a part of that. You know, Miss Amy will be a part of that and others. Um, you know, but we want to, you know, make sure that we're getting the right people in here. What are the two or three characteristics that you want to look for in a next head coach? Um, in all fairness, I don't want to, you know, go into that uh, right now specifically. Uh, I promise you, um, you know, at a given time when we're, you know, up here, um, you know, introducing the next head coach, I'll, I'll go into that. But I think right now is best for us to keep that tight, you know what I mean, amongst ourselves um, as we go through our process. Uh, no, I was not in the room um, uh, when, the, when the news was delivered. Um, and these these things are ultimately, you know, Miss Amy's uh, decisions. Um, I think um, organizationally structured, we both report to her. Um, and, you know, I know they've always had their, you know, their one-on-one -on -one conversations as I have, you know, with her throughout the year and just throughout, you know, my time being here. Uh, so, no, uh, I wasn't present. Um, but that's just the way it is. Did you, get, did you have any input at all? And what's your understanding of why Mike was fired? Well, um, like Miss Amy said in her statement, it's about her long-term vision, you know, of what she wants uh, the organization to be um, and how she wants to move this organization, you know, forward. How did it work for, for nobody to have final say? It worked fine um, because, again, I, I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, with this group. You know, I, I see that as an as a ego uh, driven part, you know, that can create dissension. And, you know, that's the his guy, my guy, you know, type of conversation. But again, there was never going to be a player brought in here that we weren't in agreement with. Was it, part, was it part of your agreement in the collaboration that Mike would face the music on everything difficult through the season and that you would be as invisible as you were? No, um, I think, well, to your point, because I, I know where we want to go with this. Um, I was out front from the moment I got hired through the spring, 
um, you know, throughout that whole process. And I just felt like whether right or wrong, you know, and it's something for me to learn from as we move forward. Um, I just felt like the the fall should have been about, you know, the players and the coaches. Now, in terms of when it came to the, the KB trade and why I was not out front on that, you know, um, Mike's had the relationship, you know, with Kevin over the last, you know, six years or whatever it, uh, it's been. Um, and we felt like it was best for him, you know, to, uh, to go out front and handle that. Did Mike want more control uh, in, in the process or at least a different structure set up? We never had those conversations um, because uh, Mike was a part of every every meeting that we ever had in terms of uh, talent acquisition. Uh, the way we did things last year from the moment I came in, we had a free agency meeting with the scouts um, and we were all in there. We had a meeting with the coaches. We were all in there, same thing for the draft process. So again, no player came through here that our coaches did not see. Derek kind of approached Sunday as if it was his last game here. Is there a scenario where you maybe try to pursue him, or is that depend on maybe who the new head coach is? Yeah, well? that'll be a that'll be a, a new head coach, the new head coach, and, and I, you know, having a conversation. Um, I had a really good conversation uh, with Derek yesterday, you know, on the way out, and um, you know, we had our conversation, which I'll keep between him and I. But you know, the the doors never close. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.